the basic principle of ablation in atrial fibrillation is to isolate the atrial fibrillation source, which is the pulmonary veins in the left atrium. As we discussed earlier, the pulmonary veins are responsible for atrial fibrillation in greater than 90% of the cases. minority of cases, the activity or the drivers for fibrillation may reside outside of the vein. By simply isolating the vein, you may not be able to cure all atrial fibrillation. After we isolate the pulmonary veins, we have to look for these other drivers to eliminate atrial fibrillation. Before we bring a patient to the hospital to perform atrial fibrillation ablation, the patient must be on anticoagulation. Anticoagulation is usually done through the use of warfarin or coumadin. This is a blood thinner that will help thin the blood to prevent blood clot from forming. In patients with atrial fibrillation who are at risk for developing blood clot and stroke, the thrombus or the clot typically occurs in the left atrium and specifically in the appendage of the left atrium. The left atrium is where we will be placing the catheter to perform ablation for atrial fibrillation. Therefore, it is critically important that the blood be thinned for at least two to three weeks before the procedure and for several months after the procedure. The next thing we need to do is to perform something called a CAT scan or CT. Specifically, it is a CAT scan CT angiogram. We then take that data and reconstruct the geometry of the heart, and especially the left atrium. In the procedure, we pass catheter into the heart under what we call fluoroscopy. Fluoroscopy is an x-ray that helps us visualize the catheter in the heart in a real-time fashion. As catheters are passed through various access points, typically in the groin or in the neck, catheters are then passed into the heart through the vein. The catheter placement in the heart is helped by using fluoroscopy. To help us deliver these ablation lesions in an effective, accurate, and safe manner, we use something called 3D mapping. 3D mapping is analogous to, say, the GPS in our driving. If you imagine driving a car, in the old days we need to look at the map to know where we're going. These days, you turn on the GPS in your, in your car, you know your location relative to the street, you see the street, and you know you're going north, south, east, west, turn right, turn left. In the heart, when we do ablation using 3D mapping, it's exactly the same idea. We first create a map of the heart, and that map is done by putting a catheter in the left atrium or other chamber of the heart, and we roam around with the catheter to create what we call virtual map of the heart. After that, we put a catheter for ablation into the heart, and we can see the heart and the catheter and their relative position in real time. This is a picture of the geometry of the left atrium in real time. You can see we're looking at the heart or the left atrium. This is the right superior pulmonary vein, right inferior pulmonary vein, left superior, and left inferior is behind. You can rotate this map 360 degree and you can see now the back of the heart with the four veins, the left side of the heart, the front side of the heart, mitral valve, and back to the right side of the heart.